Lightning likes to hit tall things. Trees, buildings, people. The energy up in the clouds is bouncing around causing trouble. Sometimes it goes cloud to cloud, sometimes it goes cloud to ground. The closer the jump, the more likely the lightning will get all up in that receptacle's business. So what happens when you have a giant metal tube flying around among those cloud-shaped Tesla coils? Bam! Airplane, struck by lightning, flames and death and destruction. We're going down! Well, actually, no. Back in the 60s, this happened and the fuel tank on an aircraft blew up and people thought, this is bad news. We should probably do something about this. So they went to the safety measure police and got some tips. Tip number one. Don't fly through storm clouds that have death written on them. Not so much for the lightning, but they pack one heck of a wind shear and they have a crazy turbulence wallop. Tip number two. Build your planes out of things that conduct electricity well. It's a good idea. If you can direct the flow of energy, you can prepare for the inevitable, like lightning hitting your plane mid-flight, or the car in front of you driving like a punk teenager out for a joyride. Tip number three. Test that biz before you put it in the air. It's hard to overstate exactly how important it is to test these things out before you put them into action. Nobody wanted an ocean gate, and they sure as heck don't want a flaming projectile more commonly known as grandma. The chances of being struck in the air are actually much lower once the airplane has reached its average cruising altitude. Most passenger planes put up their feet and relax at around 35,000 feet, and the danger of strikes is most relevant from 5,000 to 15,000 feet. Basically, when they are going up, or coming back down. It's the rite of passage that turns an airplane child into an airplane man. Or woman. That airplane can be whatever gender it wants. So now you've got this plane that is built out of conductive material. A metal. Probably aluminum. Great. Now take yourself out of the 1950s and join us in the present day, when airplanes are made out of composite materials like fiberglass and carbon fiber. On a plane with an aluminum body, the shell of the plane actually acts as a giant Faraday cage shunting the electricity to the outside of the body. None of those electrical vibes go through the midsection where the kitties are sitting. This is actually the same reason that people in cars are basically immune to lightning strikes, which is great for the people on their way to see Mickey Mouse. Mickey prefers his fans unbarbecued. This is a big problem for new planes and their fancy fibers. Make electricity go stabby stabby. So the big boys in the lab spruced up the composites with a copper mesh and all's well again. The nice part about planning is it lets you think ahead. Like how if you know you are going to be flying next to lightning, you can maybe make yourself unattractive to it. Sort of an ugly duckling of the aviation world effect. Stick some static eliminators on the wings to keep the plane as platonic as possible. Uh, I mean as neutral as possible. Then if the lightning does get too handsy, those little rods can shove it off to be someone else's problem. How big of a problem you ask? 1.21 gigawatts of a problem? No, actually it's around a billion volts. The internet tells me that's five times the heat of the sun, but the internet also told me that Joe Biden was a lizard? Yeah, I'm gonna move on. In general, lightning likes to hit the nose of the aircraft first and exit through the tail or the wings. The nose is where most of the sensors and specialized airplane equipment are in the plane. These sensors have a hard time if there is metal in the way, so the nose needs to be made out of something non-metal, but that makes it a sitting duck for electrical damage. To combat this, thin metal fingers are spread out and around the nose of the plane to keep the visibility up, but the electricity diverted, in much the same way that I keep my dad diverted from talking politics by asking, who wants ice cream? There are plenty of other electronics on board throughout the plane. The good news is that our engineer peeps thought of that. Those electronics are grounded, wrapped in copper mesh cages, given their own tiny lightning rods to play with, and backed up by other redundant systems. Oh, and they also learned from their mistake in the 60s when the fuel tank caught fire. Now fuel tanks are pressurized with a neutral gas to keep things from catching feelings in tiny, dark, enclosed spaces. So the moral to this story is that when lightning strikes the plane that you were in, as it does at least once a year to every plane in the air, you can rest easy knowing that you won't die because of it. It'll be the dismount that gets you.